We're talking about picking up dog poo. And one of the biggest, or I have this conversation in an exam room with clients on a daily basis. And, and one of the common retorts I get is, oh, you know, within a few days it, it rains, or I, I, uh, I had one client the other day said, well, I, I take a watering can out there and I'll water it in. I said, oh, please don't do that. So although it's, we all like to be green and organic and natural, there's some real fallacy in that, and that's what we're gonna talk about. Here's why we need to bother with picking up the poo. Poo is a big deal. It contains some really nasty disease causing, it, it, disease causing organisms. We, we refer to those as zoonosis. A zoonosis by definition is a disease that's commonly carried by animals that can be transmitted to people. That's a zoonotic disease. In, in dog stool there are three categories, if you will, of zoonotic diseases we're concerned about. Parasite eggs, or parasites, which come in the form of eggs, bacteria, and protozoa. And it's, it's also easy to think, well, gosh, you know, we don't eat that stuff, so what's the big deal? I don't, I don't graze in the backyard. Here's, here's the problem. All three of those organisms can form cysts, can form, uh, they do form eggs, and those cysts and eggs are very, very, and spores are very resistant to the elements. We know that hookworm eggs and roundworm eggs can live in the soil for more than five years. I mean, unprotected in your backyard. So yeah, it rains and the poo disappears, you can't even smell it, but the eggs and the cysts are still there. That's why it's a big deal. These things are built for survival. And they survive by producing large numbers of offspring, hundreds of thousands in their very short lifetimes, and by being so resistant to the elements. Um, uh, it, it's important to read this. This, is, this was a, a news clip put out by the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, November 6, 2007. Shocking number, 14% of the United States population is infected with Toxicara, which is the scientific name for the round, the common roundworm in dogs and cats. Not all of us are at equal risk. The individuals at high risk, highest risk are our children for two main reasons. They're young, therefore their, their immune systems are not, pardon me, they're not as mature as they will be as adults. And their behavior, children are playing in the dirt, they're putting the leaf in their mouth and they're uh, eating their sandwich without washing their hands. Uh, so children are, are at risk for both of those reasons. Our elderly are at greater risk simply because as we age, it is a fact that our immune system becomes less capable of fighting off disease. And then um, a significant portion of the U.S. population is by definition and by the medical community immunocompromised. And some of the more common um, situations that would, would uh, compromise your immune system are certainly pregnancy, being a diabetic, if you're the recipient of a transplant, heart, liver, kidney, you have to be on medication to keep your body from rejecting that transplant, so you are immunocompromised. If you're on immunotherapy to, to help you deal with the disease that you have, if you're, on, uh, if you're being treated with chemotherapy drugs or radiation, or if you're infected with uh, HIV. All of those things put you at greater risk even if you're, in, even if you're middle-aged. You remember what we said earlier? The, one of the big issues, and I'm, I'm just using the hookworm as an example, can live in the soil for how long? at least five years. They probably live a lot longer than that. It's kind of hard to keep around a, a, a group of eggs around and, and find out what that end point is. The point is, it's a long time. A picture here is of a child's foot. 
uh, has a medical condition known as cutaneous larval migraines. What that really means is it's uh, this child's foot came in contact with a hookworm larva, a little microscopic larva. Uh, the larva is actually this little round beaded coil thing inside that hookworm egg. That is the larva. When the conditions are right, it will hatch out of there and that's when it can, that hookworm larva can actually penetrate normal healthy skin. You don't have to swallow a hookworm larva to get hookworms. It causes this real nasty uh, and very unpleasant skin rash. This is a roundworm, uh, an adult roundworm. This is, this is not a microscopic picture. This, is, this looks like a white fishing worm. Eh. Not very pretty, but uh, this guy causes some really nasty diseases. Two in particular, the, the one I have a picture of is ocular larval migraines. It's a condition where this child swallowed a roundworm egg. The egg hatched out and actually migrated to his eye. And the little opacity you see in this child's left eye is that roundworm larva. This child is blind for life. There is no treatment. Two more pictures of the same thing, and it points out uh, in this child, it's his right eye. Um, and the, the lower left-hand corner there shows his retina. There's big granulomas in there. This child is sadly blind for life. There is no treatment. Roundworm larva cause another condition that in one sense is even worse than this, and that is um, a condition known as has visceral larval migraines, and it's where these same roundworm eggs migrate into the abdominal cavity, and in the liver and the spleen, they cause very large granulomas. They're like tumor-like growths. You can go in and surgically remove some of them, but there really isn't, a, a, aside from surgical removal, there is no treatment for these diseases in people. Toxoplasma is a disease that most of us have heard about. Um, if a woman is infected in her first trimester of pregnancy, there's a very high probability she's going to have um, a child born with a birth, one or more birth defects. What most of us don't realize is that toxoplasmosis is the third, large, the third leading cause of death that's attributable to foodborne diseases in this country. We're not talking about third world countries, We're talking about the United States. Here's a list of the more common pathogenic bacteria. Again, pathogenic are just disease-causing bacteria that is found in dog stool that is of risk to we humans. E. coli. Several times a year we hear about a batch of hamburger that's been contaminated with E. coli, has to be, has to be uh, recalled. Clostridia. Clostridia is a bacteria that forms spores that can live for years and years and years. Salmonella, Campylobacter, Cryptosporidium, Giardia. Giardia is actually a, a, one of the protozoan organisms, as is uh, Cryptosporidium. Those guys uh, can cause very serious problems, severe cramping, vomiting, diarrhea, dehydration, and there are many deaths every year attributable to one of those, one of those disease-causing organisms. So, we love our dogs. Nobody's suggesting that we get rid of our dogs or that we don't have dogs. They, they do. They're a wonderful asset to our families. They provide uh, a lots of emotional support, companionship. They help teach children responsibility. There is a very real emotional bond that we develop with these guys. But how do we keep these, how do we keep our man's best friend from causing a true tragedy? And the solution here is, is really fairly simple. Uh, there is an organization known as CAPSI, or the Companion Animal Parasite Council. And that's a group of experts in both veterinary and human medical fields that, have, that do ongoing studies of the zoonotic potential, the disease-causing potential of the parasites, bacteria, and, and uh, uh, protozoa that our pets can carry. There's four very simple things that we do. One is we do not feed our pet raw food of any kind. 
One of the things that I, I, I don't have any financial stake in, but there are several companies that are marketing all raw diets because they're uh, perceived to be natural, therefore they must be more wholesome. Bad idea. Uh, we need to have a stool sample checked by your veterinarian at least twice a year if you're on monthly parasite prevention and four times a year if you're not. The third thing we want to do is keep our dogs and cats on lifelong monthly parasite preventatives. Those are, they are prescription medications. You will have to get those from your veterinarian, uh, but they are very cost effective. And the last thing we do is we pick up the poo. And the last thing I would, I, I would appeal to you, if you won't do it because it's the law, won't you at least do it for our children and those that we love?